Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. It's Local Chat, episode 81. I sound perfectly normal. I'm in no way sick at all, and I'm perfectly fine, and I'm here to host this show. Joining me this week, as always, it's the lovely Ian Gibson. I told you to get vaccinated. I told you. That's that's probably the worst thing you could have said. <laughs> and also here, uh, also here, um, I can't think of a joke. Kyle's here, finally. Yeah. I feel like I've asked you to be on the show for like four weeks. And it's every been time. it's been like a month, and every time I'm like, "Can you get someone else?" Because I'm busy <laughs> watching movies. You and your stupid social life. Um, oh, sorry about that. To clarify, I, I, I am movies. vaxxed and boosted. <laughs> um, <coughs> it's going great. Ivermectin <coughs> doesn't count, Will. I, That's yeah. different. We've talked about this. Well, I had to buy a horse, and now. And now you I just, just came to my parents' house. We have like five of them. Oh, would have been way cheaper. Dang it! Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was gonna make a horse <laughs> cock joke, and I decided not to. Uh, anyways, moving on. Um, we're here to talk about did. video games. Uh, I'm gonna try not to talk too much during this podcast for uh, fear of losing my voice, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I've been playing this week. Who's excited for that? Round of applause, please. Thank you. Um, uh, we can see what you're going to talk about. I know, about, I know. So. I, I'm not going to talk on it very long. Here. You didn't put RimWorld on here, though? <sighs> I, didn't act, I didn't play I, I didn't play RimWorld. <laughs> um, I did, however, finish The Outer Worlds. Uh, and all I'm going to say, because I've talked about this game for three weeks, still like that game. I think the two DLCs that came out after the game are better than the base game. Um, I played through both of them. They were engaging and fun, had cool story twists. Um, some of them I didn't see coming uh, and had options for things that I didn't realize I could do. Like one of the DLCs, you can just go kill the person and then leave and then someone else will contact you and be like, hey, you want to do this job for me? Since you you seem impulsive because you just killed that person instead of talking to them. And I'm like, that's <laughs> awesome. Um, that's awesome. So the two DLCs, I highly recommend playing them. They were really fun. Uh, it sucked going from that to then playing the end game final mission, which was kind of a little lackluster. Um, but I will say I'm looking forward to two. And I did look up uh, a speed run of Outer Worlds, uh, which was really interesting as well. Uh, it's mostly a lot of typing and not very That's, much um, glitching. It's like getting to the the there's an ending where you jump a ship into the sun and it just ends the game, which is gotcha. pretty good. That, that's really good to hear that the DLC is even better than the base game because after the DLC comes the sequel. So hopefully that yeah. trend of like continuous improvement continues into the sequel. Totally. I, I said this about the gunk with uh that studio trying to make a 3D game and them just playing it safe. And this feels like Obsidian being like, hey, can we make another Fallout New Vegas, but let's play it safe? Um, mm -hmm. And it, it really feels like that. And then the DLCs were them being like, hey, people liked it. Let's make these like really interesting and fun. Um, yeah, it was great. Uh, other than that, I have been playing. Uh, I bought a bunch of games on the Steam sale and I'm finally getting around to playing them. One of them is Stacklands, which is a card based row a run card based run based uh village colony simulation i would mm -hmm. say village um basically you get these starter packs when you start your run uh uh so there'll be like a berry bush and a villager you put the villager on top of the berry bush card and then every countdown of the timer a berry pops out and then every cycle of the moon you have to feed your villagers and it kind of sp spirals off from there. You can sell things for coins to buy more card packs. And when you get a card pack, you open them and the cards like fly out and they literally look like card packs that you like rip open, uh, which is really neat uh, aesthetically. And then you'll get ideas out of those uh, that will teach you new recipes. And then you can just sell those idea cards. Uh, I made it like 24, 25 days into the run. And then this like strange portal appeared and like four bears came out. Uh, the bad kind 
and just wrecked my entire village. And I was like, oh, crap. But it's really fun. It's got uh, it definitely has some like indie developer vibes to it and like bug squashing. Um, but I really did enjoy it. So uh, I it was like three dollars on the uh, on the Steam sale. So I just jumped on yeah, it. And, th- and that came out recently, too. I was seeing um, I, I don't remember how, but I think I follow one of the devs on Twitter and they were posting about it when it came out earlier this year. Yeah, I think now that you say that, I, I think you might have it wish listed because I think when I bought it, it had the little fr- your friend has this wish listed buy it for him and i was like fuck no um you? wow yeah. uh it's really fun so I- i'm gonna try it again uh it wasn't immediately gripping me like crazy but uh i had a pretty <coughs> good time with it um and the other uh, the other game uh i uh keen observers of this document will see there's two games on here but i'm saving one for kyle uh the other game i was playing is brigand okay this word. Waxica? No, Waxica. no, no, no. It's pronounced Oaxaca, right? I'm not crazy. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds right. That okay. sounds right. I deliberately didn't look it up to make sure I wasn't an idiot. <laughs> what the fuck is this game, Will? This game? I just Googled it and I am seen. I am seen images. <laughs> this game is awesome. Good Lord. Um, I'm not very far into it. I died and then my save was like the beginning of the game. Um, basically you wake up in a jail cell. This game looks like Fallout for Fallout three, but for the PlayStation one, um, I woke up in a jail cell and this guy was there. Everyone has Russian accents. You're supposed to be in like New Mexico after the world fell. And there's like these two gangs that are fighting. Uh, it's got, I don't know if it's like, uh, pres- it, I don't think it's like procedure to generate anything. I just think it's an interesting indie game. Um, again, I'm not very far into it. Uh, I got a little far and then I was supposed to defend this thing from gang members and they just shot me in the head. Um, again, this game is like $3 on Steam or at least was during the sale. Um, I During this last Steam sale, I went through a bunch of curators uh, on my... Not uh, curators on Steam, but also people I follow on Twitter who were tweeting out indie game stuff like specific niche indie game stuff and i bought eight games that were were all under five dollars because they were just these indie developers and it was all these people being like hey i played this it's not gonna like blow your mind or anything but there are these really cool efforts from these like weird developers and stuff so yeah i think i think that uh, i will i will grant this i think that absolves you paying sixty dollars for far cry 6 when it came out Thank i think you. that balances out Thank you. Wipes the slate clean. Do you think if I do a video at work for Far Cry 6 now, I can expense that from <laughs> all the way back yes, then? but I believe it's $15 right now or something like Damn. that. And also rum- rumored to be coming to Game Pass any day now. No, they said that wasn't true. Ubisoft put it, put, put, it, put, put that out. <clears throat> they stamped out that rumor. It was mislabeled, apparently. But now that I'm saying that, it probably is coming That's, to Game Pass. And I was going to say, we're, this is, <laughs> I'm sorry. This is, who are we talking about? A little here? COVID brain here. Um, anyways, those are the games I've been playing. Uh, look forward to more of those indie stuff popping up. I have six more um, to go through. And I'll, I'll probably hit Brigand again, Stacklands as well. But I won't I won't bring them up again like I bring up RimWorld. Um, okay, Ian, tell me about Power Watch yeah. Simulator. <laughs> Simulator. Yeah. Yeah, I uh I I needed a game to just relax and chill out to and um I've been playing a lot of Pokemon White. I'm still playing Pokemon White. But but Pokemon White on the 3DS is a particular type of game where you play it on the couch or you play it in bed. And I want to say that's kind of and you play it when you're traveling and that's kind of it. That's nothing against the game. It's just I'm not going to like sit in an armchair. I'm not going to sit at my desk. And I was like, you know what? I want to play. I want to play a PC game. And I happened to see somebody say like power wash simulator. It's real chill. And I knew it just hit game pass. So I installed it and uh, I played a couple hours of it. It's pretty fun. It's basically exactly what it says it is. You know, this whole like simulator genre that has really cropped up in the last couple of years. Um, there, there are ways to do a good simulator and a bad simulator. 
Um, and Power Wash Simulator is is a very good simulator. It gives it gives you that same Power Wash feeling where you've got the nozzles and you're like wiping stuff clean, but it has a little level of difficulty to it. So you know there's some gunk you've got to switch nozzles for and stuff you got to like get into a certain position and try and get or like position a ladder to get to it. But at the same time, it's not as difficult as it is in real life, and it's not super difficult where it's like you have to get every speck of dirt off this object. Um, there's some threshold they have. Let's say it's like 98%. So as long as you've removed like that amount of dirt from an object, it counts as clean. And they're also doing things like when you point at an object in the top left, there's a little UI icon and it'll say like, it'll say like tower support beam. And then it says like a hundred percent. And then, it, and then as you're spraying it, it'll count down. So it tells you how close you are to it. You can hit the tab button and it makes dirt pulse quickly as like bright orange. Um, you can open a menu that has a list of every single item in the me- in the mission that you need to clean and tells you like what percent you're at. So on some of these bigger missions, you go around, you clean a bunch of stuff. You know, when you get to 98 percent, like something like pops, it breaks down structures into individual parts. So it's not like you have to clean the whole thing. And then you go, what did I miss? And you have to search the whole thing. You're just searching for a part of it. And then at the end, you're like, oh, I'm only at 94 percent for this mission. OK, real quick pop open a list. Oh, I missed this support beam. What is that? And then you can actually click it and it'll do like a soft pulse in the world. So it's, it's, it's scratching the itch of power washing. It has just enough difficulty to make it feel like you are accomplishing something. But at the same time, like it is built with all those quality of life improvements in mind, like from the get go. And that, and that removes a lot of the frustration. Like we tried to play, um, shit what was that game oh about? uh the clean not the cleaner spaceship it cleanup is, uh, crew space cleanup it's crew. it's like a sci-fi game and there's a whole bunch of blood and gore and you're given like mop buckets and you can do multiplayer and it's all first person but the problem we had with it pretty much immediately was it was doing the type of thing where it's like you have a mop and bucket okay now take your bucket over and like fill it up at the spout now carefully carry your but oh you spilled your bucket now the wor- water's the dirty water's all over the floor. Now that's worse. So it became this like this like three stooges farce, yeah. but at the same time you're being graded. So it's like, I'm going to have to fiddle with this system, like, like an accidental octo dad or quirk where you're just like, I'm having to fiddle with this stuff, but it doesn't really want me to, but at the same time I have to. And it like, I, I feel like that's one of the very few games that we stream for about 15 minutes. And then we switch games. Like we usually give a game a shot, but that game was just immediately frustrating. This game doesn't have that at all. Um, that being said, this is a power washing simulator. You're going to scratch that itch after about 25 minutes. And then for me, it was just like, okay, I think I'm done. Yeah. Um, so, so, it, but, but again, I played it, I played it over a couple of days and I probably played an hour each day and it's a perfect podcast game. Um, and, and, and so if you think that'll be relaxing for you, it's on game pass, I believe console and PC. Um, so it's definitely something. Look, look, I'll say it again. You should try this out if you have Game Pass. <laughs> and if you don't have Game Pass, get Game Pass, period. End of discussion. Because I, end of discussion. So, I was just, <clears throat> I was going to say, um, if you like that, I don't think I ever mentioned it because I think I played it in that weird in between where I forget to write down between episodes. Um, I played maybe four or five hours of House Flipper on Game Pass. Yeah. Uh, I've been thinking about trying that. I, and yeah. I really liked that because it was a bunch of different jobs you could do. See, I could see myself liking that. Yeah. I'll try and that. I actually got to the point where I, I fixed up my first house and sold it and bought a new house. And then you do like odd jobs at other people's houses. Um, I think you might like that. Uh, that one tied to me over for a yeah. while. But again, as somebody who walked around the yard for an hour yesterday, like fertilizing and seeding and doing like weed killer maybe i don't need to do more virtual housework i'll give it a shot though i'll give it a shot give it a shot uh the other game i've been playing i finally gave it a shot it's been a buzz for like a week or two but the timing wasn't right with me like coming off of death stranding and then going on a vacation and then coming back already playing pokemon white it's time to play another white game that's right neon white i gave it a shot on stream on tuesday and folks i made it about 30 minutes in look this game this game has problems did did you watch the stream well i don't know how far you got you were there for a little bit i was there for a little bit and then today i was 
So I'm like half working. Like I, I come to work and then do some stuff and then I, I go rest, I guess. Cause like the big thing with COVID is like, you just lose focus so easily and like get fatigued. <laughs> um, or what are you, so, what are you talking about? Wow, that was actually genuinely yeah, you're really not good. Making any sense? <laughs> yeah. Where? What year is it? Um, what was fuck. that middle part again? <laughs> um, shut up. Um, so I was like, I sat down. I was like, oh, let me catch up on Ian's stream, and I pulled it up, and I go, thirty minutes. So I went straight to the end, and you like start a conversation with someone, and the most annoying character voice I've yes. ever heard in my entire yes. life comes out, and yes. you you just look at the camera, the screen changes, you goes, so that's it, folks. I tried neon white, and I wow. lost it. You skipped to the end, but that person had been there for about <sighs> fifteen minutes. Okay, look, here's the problem with this game. This game, this game has a split personality, and the problem is each of its halves, it's doing pretty well but you put it together and it doesn't make sense so so the gameplay half is it's a speed running game you have a you have a, a cars you, well, well actually you know what you guys are dedicated local chat fans chris talked about it a couple weeks ago yeah but it's it's all about speed running it's about like boom give me the level speeding through the level oh 17 seconds i think i can get it quicker boom replay boom oh i made a mistake replay boom um and it's fairly quick it's not track mania quick like there's still like if you hit the replay button it then shows you like a summary screen and then you have to click again to restart the level. So it's not like, uh, I don't know if you guys have played track mania, but track mania it's similar speed run type, but it's literally like you press the reset button and boom, you're immediately back at the start. There's no mm -hmm. delay at all. So it's just like, go, go. Oh, made a mistake. Go, go, go. Oh, made a mistake. So it's not quite that quick, but it's very close. Um, and that's the emphasis of the gameplay of this game. The art style and story and kind of setting of this game is much more persona like where basically you have a bunch of uh, uh, over-the-top anime cringy characters and they're really weird and they're interacting with you in weird ways. And then you have like uh, lots of style and stylish transitions and then there's different characters to talk to in different areas to go to. The problem is, here's the problem, folks. I played Persona 5. I really liked Persona 5. I played it for 60 hours. That tutorial lasts about 8 to 12 hours. I was okay with that because th I knew that's what the game was, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm getting into it. And the story and the characters were pulling me into it. The problem is Neon White is a very fast-paced game stuck in between, like, very slow, agonizingly bad, like, story and world-building sections. And and I think I, I think the problem is so bad that even if the story wasn't bad, even if the characters were compelling, the fact that I played for 30 minutes and I only played eight missions, which total was probably about six minutes of gameplay because some of those were less than a minute for mission length is just like, no, that doesn't work. It's like if Super Meat Boy had a five minute story cut scene between every other mission, it wouldn't work, you know, and, and I don't know how people how they could have thought this would work and i think it's because they think the dialogue is so cringy and cool that it would come off that way and i'm sure there is a compelling game in here but i'm not going to stick around long enough to basically like know that i'm going to have to skip all the story and all the style in this game as much as possible just to get to the yeah. gameplay like if you're going to make me work for it like that then no i'm not going to play it and which is a shame because I was getting into the gameplay segment, but then it literally sat me down for like 15 minutes of annoying cutscenes with like super like, oh, my God, who oh, is this cute boy? Like, that's not an exaggeration. That's that's pretty much the level of writing and voice acting in this. And it's deliberate, but it's the type of deliberate where it's like you've gone too far. You have Part gone of, too far. And what you're trying to make fun of, you are now that it's yeah. it's. Oh. Well, part of me was thinking because I was <clears throat> kind of thinking through this after watching it um, and not necessarily anticipating what problems you had with it, but like kind of noticing. And I think like I think some of that would have been mitigated by having either like your first run or something have the dialogue be happening like in a radio set yes. or something while you're doing the run. And so like the first run of something is always like a story ish run. And then that way, it kind of two birds, one stone. Um, you don't have to sit there and wait for the people to talk. You can like yeah. run around and try different things while it's happening. So, yeah, I, I, just, I definitely saw what yeah. you were saying. 
it's just it's so weird because because there are also moments where they like deliberately they de- they have made deliberate decisions to force you through these moments to force you to be in these moments longer than you want to be. So I'll give you an example. When you're in those moments, if you're if if you're in a dialogue cutscene and a character says a line of dialogue, from what I could tell, again, I only played 30 minutes, but it doesn't auto say the next line of dialogue. They finish the line of dialogue, you have to hit the space bar or whatever to play the next line of dialogue. And it's like, look, if like it's you're just you're just slowing things down and like adding all these frustration points when all I want to do is play this cool little card based speed running game. Yeah. You know? And I, and I think it's 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 also very frustrating. You know, this comes from Ben Esposito of Arcane Kids, and I love Arcane Kids, Bubsy 3D, uh, Sonic VR. It was Sonic VR, right? Sonic Is Dreams Collection. Called? Sonic Dreams Collection. Like those those games are incredible. I think about the moment when you look into Sonic's eyes all the time. I think about Sonic's feet. I think about <laughs> like like Sonic no. in the delivery room. Like they're incredible. Like they're they're trying to be something, but at the same time make fun of it. And this feels like them going, like, you know what? We could probably make a good persona game. And they're trying to. They're trying to be too earnest in this. And it doesn't work. Like, go back to the weirdo shit. You know, make fun of that stuff. Don't try to be it. And it's it's really frustrating because I really went into this going, I'm ready for a new game. I'm ready for a new game. I want to play this. It's supposed to be goatee. I'm ready. I'm ready. I've been two weeks ready. And I, I, I couldn't make it 30 minutes. It just damn. You were two weeks ready. <laughs> two weeks ready. That's crazy to be to be clear, though. If y'all are interested at all, please give it a shot because it's getting crazy reviews. This could just be one of my hot takes, but I just could not. It, it felt too discordant what was going on and i was like i would i would pay money for a mod that just strips it all the way down to just a list of missions run through them yeah i mean i i watched um donkey's review of this and it definitely was on my radar just because of the gameplay reminded me and he says this in his review but it reminded me so much of mirror's edge mixed with like i think he says doom where it's yeah. like you're you're yeah. you're kind of doing parkour while shooting um which i'm a huge mirror's edge fan and doom you know i can I can I can play around with Doom a little bit. Um, so I was definitely interested in it, but he did mention how like weird the story is. But I think he had the opposite effect that you did, where he sort of he sort of liked the fact that it leaned so far into the ridiculousness and the the sort of like over the, the overdoneness of the narrative. Um, and he, yeah. he thought that he thought that I think he said like he, there's like a hump that you have to get over. And then once you do, it's like, it's okay. But um, I guess maybe like, it's just not doable for some people. I mean, I, yeah, I kind of want to play fog. it. Yeah. I kind of want to play it, but like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe if it goes on sale or something, but I, I know, I know you, I know you're much more tolerant of games and you are more willing to give them a shot than I am. So, so definitely give it a shot. Cause again, the gameplay is fantastic. It was starting yeah. to click like, like right before I quit the stream, it was starting to click. Like there's like, like you played like eight missions in a row and there's a little bit of dialogue between them. And by the time I finished the eighth mission, I was like, man, I'm really liking these mechanics. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling good. And then it dumps like 15 minutes of dialogue on you. And I'm just like, no. Yeah. No, 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 no. Because that's the other thing is that you can skip those, but I don't want to do that to this. Like, I'm fine skipping or speeding through stuff in a game, but I don't mm. want to pay 20 bucks for a game, sit down to play it, and then just, like, deliberately skip what feels like half of the game, basically. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's upsetting. But anyways, uh, the other game I've been playing is Stray, but I have not played a whole lot of it. So, Kyle, please tell me all about Stray. Uh, I beat Stray in one go. I bought wow. it and played all of it. It was four nice. hours and 30 some minutes, um, okay. which I, I watched a couple reviews after I played it. And someone was saying 10 hours. I don't know what the hell that guy was was doing because there is not 10 hours of content in this in this game and it also mm-hmm. doesn't present itself as being like it has 10 hours of content i feel like it's very focused and um it it yeah it doesn't stray too far from what it's trying to do so yeah. I, I, that was just some rant it was like a random popular review on youtube i i, I don't know who it was from but he was like yeah i think it ten, took me 10 hours to beat it and i was like this is at like three in the morning last night. I was like, what are you talking about? Um, I've heard four hours as well. So I think I think you're right on the money. Yeah, I, I did four and a half mostly because I I 
tried to do everything I could in one area because I wasn't sure when it, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to go back or if it would let me, um, uh, like retroactively get stuff. Um, and I still miss stuff. So there's, there's still a few different things. Basically the only thing I needed to get was, um, the little, uh, I forget the robot's name, B12 or B, B, B20 yeah. or something. I think yeah. it's vitamin. B12. Yeah. B12, the vitamin. Yeah. I take it every day. Um, so, uh, I tried to get all of the robot's memories in the one section and I did. And then there's like a sort of transition section where there is something you can get for him that I completely missed. So, uh, um, gotcha. but, but like I got all the sheet music for the, the music playing robot. And then I got, um, all the diaries and like all the, all the collectible stuff in the, in the first slums area. Um, mm-hmm. overall, I gotta say, this is a lovely little game. It is, it is very well done in my opinion uh it does not overstay its welcome it has a really really beautifully done sort of cyberpunk future world that doesn't feel it feels different enough from other iterations that we've seen of that in in other games and movies um but it's also familiar enough that it sort of draws you in at the same time and um i like uh, a lot of the main characters of the of the story, they're obviously all robots. Um, the the main narrative actually remained pretty compelling to me up until the very end, which actually has a really poignant, like emotional through point that that I thought was mm-hmm. very satisfying. Um, and uh, yeah, I just I had a really good time with it. I I think the main thing that stuck with me honestly was that I didn't feel like it dragged on too much. Like there's really That's there's good. there's really two big sections and then there's just like four or five sort of smaller sections in between them and that's it and it's you know it's it's sort of done um i i i bought it on steam and i think it was well worth the money that i spent um i thought uh, a lot of the a lot of the parts that come together like the music and um again like the art direction um but also the the animations of the cat that you play the stray um are are just really well done and i i've had cats all my life and this is so stupid to be like oh yeah they made a game about a cat of course they made everything like correct um but it it just it got the feeling right down to Mm -hmm. some of some of the more like uh little tiny like cute emotional things that cats do that we're all like oh and you get to do them as i don't know it's like it's a novelty sure but um i liked it and i thought it i thought it made the character i guess if you want to call it that the 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 main character um really really sort of come alive and and i i thought it was great yeah 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 i i've only played i think about an hour in i just finished the first section um and i'm really enjoying it so far as well i think um me being me this feels like a real fuck you to last guardian (laughs) <laughs> because when when last guardian came out like i played that game because i just gotten a ps4 never played one of those games before and everybody was hyping it up and i'm like yeah sure i'll buy this and i'll play it and it was a solid okay because because it had some problems yeah. it had some interesting sections in it but like the thing that everybody was like oh this game's amazing is they're like i have cats you don't know what it's like you don't have a cat like the guardian's like a cat man like like it's not control problems it's not ai problems it's like cats sometimes don't listen to you and i'm like look i've never had cats but fuck you that's an ai control problem when he keeps doing the same three path back and forth they're like no 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 game of the year this is like the best cat game ever and i cried at the end i'm like the fuck is wrong with you like there's a connection in the game but it's so like half-assed and broken that it's not there so for me to play stray especially now that i'm like a like a cat daddy for the last two years is just hitting so much heavier because it's like now this is a fucking cat game like within the first like like you said the first like two minutes like just the way the cat moves the way it's behaving the way it's interacting with other cats it's like fuck yeah this is a cat game Boom, through and through. And I, I I think you're totally right about like it is surprising to have a good cat game. Like there are so many other games that have cats and dogs in them. And it's basically just like, what if we put the camera closer to the ground and threw some animations on this model and you're just, I don't know, there's a bark. And it's like, so what? This is like, Refer- no, you're a cat. You know, you're doing these jumps. Like, I don't know if you noticed, but like the jump up is different from the jump down because yeah. like 
you know, they can they can make heights up, but they can, but then they can skip something and jump down and they got all the different animations. And, and it's they, just they do a really well good job of, of differentiating those two. Like, again, we're getting really granular, but like cats can jump really freaking high, like like yeah. way, way higher than you would think. And the animations in the game are actually different for like a medium height jump to a big jump to like a small jump. Like yeah. and, and it's just there's a lot of care and effort that you can tell the developers put into that, just trying to make it feel as good as it does. And like it's weird. I don't know why it's weird for me to say this, but it, it's just like it just feels it, it feels good to play a game that that is so focused on that and is and is so like your cat. Like and pulls it off, yeah, yeah and and just does, yeah, it, and it, I feel like it does it effortlessly. So uh, I mean, hats hats off to the guys behind it or, or the, the the people behind it. Um, yeah, like like uh, like just to touch on that, like something that really struck me is that these people, these developers, they own cats, they know cats, they're cat lovers, and you can see that all throughout. Like there are certain levels where either just as a throwaway thing but also as part of solving the level or puzzle you're jumping on a stack of books and then when you jump off the, the stack falls over, over. Yeah. or you're like <laughs> deliberately going up on a shelf and like pushing something over and it's just like yeah my fucking cats do that yeah. all the time you know <laughs> so it's like it's it's perfect there's all these little moments too that they added in there that they did not have to add like there's one where i noticed there was something you could jump up to on a bookshelf and i jumped to the top shelf of the bookshelf and there was like a couple pillows in there and you press the button and the cat just goes in down there yeah. and he falls asleep and i'm playing it on ps5 so the controller is just vibrating and doing like a soft purr out of the controller speaker oh, and it's awesome. just like 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 just to go back to my point of like 99 percent of other games are like you can play as a dog and it's like put the camera lower throw some shitty animations on this four-legged model and you're a dog and it's like no these they they nailed playing as a cat and it just makes it so much more yeah. enjoyable I think I think they you're right. They they nailed the the perspective aspect of it where it's not it's not just hey put the camera lower. And I have to say like there there are a few like cinematics that happen and the the cinematography in the game is really good. Like they yeah. they have this really sort of lush depth of field that comes into play sometimes and it's really good at like isolating your character and and sort of it'll, it'll the camera will kind of swing around and like focus on the cat looking at something. And it's just like, it's just those little touches that make it, make it seem more cinematic than I guess it might've otherwise. But I, I don't know. I really yeah. appreciated it from like a, a filmmaking perspective. Um, uh, Will, did you, did you, you had this on your list, right? What did, what did you think? I know you're, you're dealing with COVID voice. So no, I was five, just five sentences or less or something. Yeah. Um, no meowing. <laughs> no, uh, <clears throat> no, um, <laughs> I'm. I don't know how long, far I'm. How long time? How long time I'm in? How how time um, is long? I'm. I just got back to the slums again. I went and did a radio the tower, tower thing. Yeah. So now I'm back yeah. there. Um. I'm real. I'm enjoying it as well. I have a couple complaints, um, of the game, which is I don't. Th I don't think it looks very good. Um. But. At least it's, on the PS Five, it doesn't look very good. Um, wait, uh, wait. Let's let's. We got time. Let's time. Spe what specifically are you talking about? Because I'm curious if we're talking about the same things that are a little off. There's a lot of like animation snapping that doesn't look yeah. super great. Um, yeah, the animation which I, blending again, is not good. Indie yeah. studio. Um, I mean PlayStation money, but the guys have been working on this for five or six years. Um, and I had been following them for a while. So, like, I completely understand that. It's not like I'm sitting here being like, oh, no, 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 no. No, like them. when I was Rip mad them. with like Jedi Fallen Order with the snapping and that was That's really bad. Ridiculous. Jesus. Um, yeah. So there's that. Some of the like water textures and like the rain stuff was a little rough. Um, yeah. Other than so that. I, I, I played on PC at uh, 1440p um, with a, I have a um, what is it called? A, faster refresh rate a one, 144 refresh rate and it was pretty solidly like above 100 fps and the only real snapping that i like actively was like stop doing that stop doing that was at the beginning when yeah there's like there's like a wide yeah. shot of the cats coming Going down, down the, thing. the pipe yeah, and, and one's like yeah they're kind of like exactly that. what i'm that thinking was of. that was where it was really noticeable but as the game went on i didn't really notice a lot of that um, every once in a while something would glitch out, but I just kind of 
you know stuff to, it's again indie studio small game yeah. it, it's gonna do so, that it wasn't it wasn't constant enough for me to be like this is a real problem but i i did notice it that first time and i i actually remember being like i hope this isn't like this the entire time because yeah. it was weird but um so i was okay with that like like again it's it's really nothing um i just want to mention the blatant definitely these are just head crabs from half-life 2 um rip off of the enemies so i i i would i would recommend playing about 20 minutes further than you are right now because oh, okay. they do some they do some weird shit with that stuff. Oh, okay that's fine i and not it gets, i didn't it gets, mean it in like a they're clearly ripping it off i know oh, like they yeah, look like yeah. them and it's really funny i i, I did i did like the fact that they they took the time to be like these things are eating like metal like they're yeah. eating yeah. everything it's and gross. i was like oh they're that's fucking trash. scary yeah. for like a robot um and also i i think that the chase sequences are few and far between that like the annoying th- like i died like several times of the chase things yeah until yeah. i until i realized you have to kind of weave like you yeah. can't just go straight you have to like actively dodge um and it took me a little bit to sort of get that because it's a chase sequence i basically thought this is kind of on rails then um and it, it it's not as such but um there's not even that many of them that it makes that much of a difference so and the other thing and I, again you haven't gotten this far they do introduce like a surprising amount of mechanics like different mechanics oh. and they don't they don't spend too much time doing the same thing over and over and over they pretty they pretty much rapidly change not just the enemy type but like how you deal with certain things and it, it, the end game sort of becomes almost more stealthy um and it it's it's different i think that's what i liked about it is it did started it it actively was changing stuff yeah so yeah i I almost actually put the game down because i I really didn't like it up until you get to that first slum area and then i was like oh i i like this you know um like i i thought about not picking it up again so when i did that first slum area that's when it kind of really clicked over for me um (laughs) and then so that was fine. And then my only other complaint, which isn't a complaint, it's more of a criticism, like if they make another one of these, I think adding the Assassin's Creed hold the button and it just like you hit forward and you go up the the path. I uh rather than like so trying to figure they, it out. They have like 20% of that where if there is a yeah, straight you, series you hold of it jumps down. Yeah, if there's if there's like a a thing like four things in front of you and you just hold down A, it'll do it, but it won't do it if you're going up. Right, right. Not if you're go- yeah. like you. I know to, there's a straight yeah. across stuff, but not like yeah. Assassin's Creed pathing path sort of. It, thing. It'll still it'll still do it if you're if you're going up. Like if you hold down the jump button and you're just moving to look at your next one, it'll actively do it for you. I think that is uh, bullshit, Will, because that's the type of shit that makes games bad, where it's like, check out this awesome platforming. Okay, just, uh, I don't know, fucking press a button or something and we'll do it for you. Like, I, I really like the puzzle in this game where it's like, I can see how they connect, but I've got to figure out here. Okay, now here, now here, now here. That makes it, that makes it a better game. It did feel more like deliberate doing that where it's like a cat wouldn't do like a series of jumps necessarily like it would pause and like realign itself so i yeah i mean i i guess if they're going for realism for sure but yeah i mean next the stray to assassin's creed origins or cat creed origins or something like that yeah they're really going for realism with their cat in the cyberpunk future (laughs) with a robot that digitizes all the things well a realism for the cat itself well how do you know it's a real cat it could be a robot cat you know with crazy on the outside honestly my number one complaint with this game is that sometimes during a cutscene, when they show your cat looking at the camera the face is off and the face looks like the cat's movie it doesn't look like a cat. It's a little bit too close to human cat face. It's only in some of the shots, but it's just like you look at it and you're just like, wait, what? I never got that. I want to watch that movie again. It's so good. <sighs> uh, I've, I've never seen it, but I feel actually, like it needs to be an extra life punishment. <laughs> there's a really great, um, I, I cannot think of the YouTuber's name to plug him, but he has like an hour and a half analysis of why the music in that movie is bad. And it is such a good video. I watched the entire thing. I've seen it twice because I rewatch it. It is so good. And 
it will make you never want to hear the music from the movie ever again. Like the cat's soundtrack from cats is very good, but the, the broad, the no, no. film version. Oh, excuse I me. I just watched, I just watched good. Lindsay, Lindsay Ellis's, uh, cats video is fantastic. She's not on YouTube anymore, but it's great. Wow. If you really want to, yeah, I can't think of it. his name, but he's great. Anyways, um, uh, Kyle, tell me about spec ops. The line. It says here that you're playing it. Oh, I, I beat it again in one go. Um, it, <laughs> took me a lot longer than Stray. Um, but actually, I don't even Five know how hours. long it took me. I, I think when I beat it a year or two ago, it was like eight. Oh, you know ten. what? Four four point seven hours. So it actually oh, wow. didn't take me that much longer than Stray. <laughs> um, so I had never played this game. I had, you know, it, it's sort of lauded as having one of the one of the most interesting and talked about stories. Um, not everyone agrees that it's good, but it's very, you know, very much talked about. Um, military third person shooter. Uh, I still think the choice to set the, the game in Dubai is weird. Um, but, uh, I'd never played it before. So I played it, had not really seen anything from it. I think I'd watched a Reykjavik or a, whatever his name is on YouTube, um, did like a, a postmortem on it uh, a couple years ago and completely forgot about it. Like I just, it completely left my, my mind. So I finally played it, uh, last week and, um, it's good, but really predictable. Like the story I, from like the first 20 minutes, I was like, I know how this story's going to end just because of the way that they're presenting stuff. Um, and I don't know if that's maybe just me maturing more than, than I would have, you know, if, if I had played it when it first came out, like I probably would have thought it was really good. Um, but like, there's so many sort of genre tropes that they use to try and subvert things that I was like, I'm have both of you played it. Yeah. 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 I, okay. I played it a couple of so years ev- ago. Anyone, anyone who's watching, who's played it spoilers. Um, but like, the line between reality gets more and more blurry as you play the game until until it becomes obvious that you're a soldier dealing with PTSD trying to um, uh, find some way to dig yourself out of the hole that you you found yourself in. And um, I th- I thought that the narrative was written well. I just I I don't know if the gameplay marries well with it, um, and it. it it's actually, it was kind of like annoying to play. Like there's just, there's not shooting galleries, but like there's so many sections where you just do the exact same thing for so long. And the the level design in the first half of the game is really boring, like really not interesting. And as as it goes on, you know, the, the levels get a little bit more intricate and 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 better designed. But I just, I don't know. I, I thought it was really average. Um, and there are certain moments in the story where, um, there's like a white phosphorus thing that comes, uh, you know, where you, you are watching someone get hit with white phosphorus and then, you you know, 30 minutes later, you yourself choose to use white phosphorus on people who may or may not be the people that you think they are. And I, I, the, the entire time I was playing like that section of the game, that whole level, I was like, this is not going to turn out the way I think it is because this is how they've presented it. And like, this is how they've positioned the the characters and you're, you're two, it's a, it's a, you're part of a three man squad and your two buddies are basically like your, your conscious, uh, uh, um, your conscience, not your conscience, your conscience, Mr. Jiminy Cricket. And, um, you're like, ego id kind of thing where they're sort of giving you opposing views of what you're doing one guy um lugo i think is always like questioning why you're doing this and the other guy is like justifying it um which is a cool narrative thing but like they do that so much that for me just experiencing the narrative for the first time i really thought that uh it was it was like way too much like it was it was just so obvious what they were doing and then as reality sort of starts to bend and twist as the, as the game goes on, it was just like, I get it. Like, I, I understand what you're doing. You don't have to keep hitting me over the head with it. Um, so I, I thought it was well done to a point and then it just kind of got, it, it got old, I guess for me, but I'm not angry that I played it. I think it was, I think it was well made for the time, especially, I know they had, um, a lot of difficulties with like the multiplayer was farmed out to like 2k farmed it out to some other 
uh, company and and the the team uh, the the team that made Spec Ops is a German team. I, I don't know if they're still around, um, but they like didn't want multiplayer and 2K was like fighting them on it. And it was a whole thing. Um, but I, I feel like they told the story they wanted to tell. I just wish that it was a little a little more subtle with yeah. some of the things. Um, but I I can see why people talk about it because there were moments in it where it was genuinely like this is really shitty. Like this is like not what a typical person thinks of when they play, uh, you know, an action military shooter game. So I can respect it for that, but I don't think it was, it was for me uh, ultimately. I, I, I did go and check on steam. I played this game nearly 10 years ago. Wow. Um, and I beat it in six hours. Apparently. Um, I was just going to say, I think like, I'm trying to think of the landscape of video games, 2012, 2013. Like, I feel like this was one of the, f- not first, but, better doing of a like killer story in a video game where yeah. like stuff is surreally happening to you. Um, at least that's really how I remember it. And I just remember it being presented in that way. Like, Hey, this is a game that kind of really puts the story first and it's like, Whoa, crazy. And also think of like the landscape of storytelling 10 years ago before like the rise of, like netflix hbo all that sort of like yeah. modern storytelling where like everyone does the sort of lost thing uh and like makes stuff weird and everything um so i'll remember mm-hmm. it for that i i also really digged the sand stuff and like the sand, the sandstorm like, stuff was cool the and blown the, up and the, buildings the and everything sh- shooting like the ceilings and stuff to to like that was interesting yeah. but I, yeah. I actually found myself doing that less and less because oh, it was totally. like just yeah. easier to shoot people in the head. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. Like, and that, that's sort of what I said at the beginning where it was like, I think if I had played this back then, it probably would have hit differently and I probably would think of it really fondly. But I maybe I just played too many games that are were spawned because of it or, or in right. its wake that, that it, didn't, it yeah. didn't hit as hard. Yeah, to, to make a bad analogy, it is, it is the Citizen Kane <laughs> of its time in a way yeah. where you know like we watched citizen kane recently i'd seen it before citizen kane is a good movie nowadays but it doesn't really stand out that much but what made citizen kane so revolutionary and stand out was that it was doing a lot of new cinematography storytelling etc that focus? had never been seen before yeah exactly so so spec ops the line in the context of when it came out was doing a lot of crazy stuff some of it worked some of it didn't but if you play it nowadays you, you kind of have to have that in mind. You can't come to it fresh because so many other games have have cribbed off of it. You know, storytelling yeah. uh, expectations have have improved greatly in video games. And there's no longer the, uh, you know, toe the American military line. The American military is always good. You know, it's black and white, et cetera. That's no longer the standard, but it was when Spec Ops the line always came out. And that's good, what yeah. made it so different. I mean, it's basically like you could make the argument that it's an anti-war game. Um, I mean, when it when it comes down yeah. to it. And yeah. I, like that's that's ballsy for any developer, no matter no matter what time it is to to do something like that. I just think that like being being the first isn't always the best, um, but at least you know mm-hmm. they they got they got the ball rolling on it. So I I I think I have a lot of respect for it, even if I didn't fully enjoy yeah. it. Uh, like, like at its core, you can see is a generic military shooter, but they yeah. did their best to not make a generic military shooter, even though it's yeah. still kind of there. Yeah, uh, which, not which to hit is you with awesome, another. Honestly. Uh, movie analogy, but uh, your Citizen Kane thing made me think of this. Citizen Kane Two. Uh, Citizen Kane Two, the line <laughs> coming out next week. <laughs> there must be. Um, but I was gonna say it's like watching Psycho now and being yeah, like, ah, yeah. oh, look at all these horror movie tropes that he did. What's he doing? Um, you have to put it in context. Of- yeah, totally. Like there's. Yeah. yeah, I think that's just the biggest thing there so kyle you're an idiot so it's it's like my my dad read lord of the rings recently and he's never really been into sci-fi or fantasy but for some reason he's on a fantasy kick right now and he read lord of the rings and he was just like so all that like elves and dwarves and stuff they kind of came from him and i'm like yeah pretty much and he's like oh wow i never knew that it's like (laughs) yeah that's the original source pretty much you know that's wild um, now I'm ready to watch the Rings I, of Power streaming I, I on learned, Amazon Prime. Uh, that Tolkien had sued Dungeon. I don't know. If, I forget when Tolkien died, but his estate, his, his estate, estate sued Dungeons and Dragons for dwarves, elves, all that sort of stuff, and they lost on everything except 
Balrogs, Hobbits, Hobbit, and Ent. And, and Ent, I think, um, were the three. Well, I think the other one was the... Um... Oh, no, actually, I don't think Orokai was in there. No, Orokai. But Warg was in there, but they won that as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Which was yeah. really funny because they were, like, trying to get it all out. And they're like, no, they can keep this. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think it's time for the news. What do you guys think? Yeah. Sorry it took so long on spec offs. <laughs> That's okay. No, we had we had great discussion. Yeah, it was a great discussion. Uh, I want more of that energy, that raw Kyle yes. energy. Let me hit the news that's, button here so we can I bring. If you have something to do, you want to like fold laundry or something, I'm just going to hit the news theme. It's going to be a bit. Honestly, okay. I I I Here's didn't the realize news, the Dungeons and Dragons movie news, trailer we're hit talking today. About news, it did. What's up news? I hadn't seen it yet. But now it's, it's more to the song it, so you can I think it looks better than I thought it would. But still kind of cringy. After the song I'll explain what I thought. The Caribbean, but we don't want I, um, to have a focus I've had an idea for so a D&D movie in my head for a couple of years now. Local and I just I'm not sure Hollywood is good enough to make one better than that. Like you have to embrace it. You have to do the split world. It has to be half of the That's party what I around was the thinking. table, and the yes. other half has. And you have to split back and forth. You need and you've to got watch like the little nerdy kid. That's the Rock. Come the on, the gamers' like, darkness rising. Right there. Fantastic okay. Dungeons and Dragons movie. It's right there. So can I? Yeah. Can I just say when I watched the? You said you haven't watched the trailer, Ian. Yep. No. This is not a spoiler for the trailer. I thought they were going to do that. They were going to do like the split world. And now yeah. I'm kind of thinking they're going to pull like a Lego movie where that's revealed like yeah. 75% of the way through. I, I'm okay with that. I'm yeah, okay with I, that. I, I, I want them to do something like that. But the fact that they haven't, and I get it, it's just a teaser trailer, but like I was yeah. kind of expecting something like that. But yeah, um, I, I think what I'm really worried about is <laughs> they don't have to do the split world, but they can't. There, there are multiple different types of D&D fans, but I think there's the fan that's like rule of cool. Let's make a fun story. And then there's the people that are like, I'm going to min max the shit out of my character and have an AC of 50 and an intelligence of five. Yeah. Um, I just I'm very afraid they are going to try and make a serious Dungeons and Dragons movie and put it onto that second camp. And it's just insufferable. And and they really need to embrace the idea of like, this is creative storytelling. Yeah. The whole thing is, is you can do whatever you want in this. So show that in it. Don't just do generic action scenes. The, so, the problem uh, is the, like my two things. So I watched the trailer. I think the trailer was very much trying to be the Thor Ragnarok trailer way yes. too hard. Um, <laughs> But I, so I don't know if the movie's going to be like yeah. that. That could just be the way the editor of the trailer is. But my other thing was uh, along your lines, Dungeons and Dragons world. There's like what? There's Forgotten Realms. There's Greyhawk. Who there's, fucking knows? No, the, you know, I'm making that fucking point right now. That's what I'm trying yeah, to say. Is the good there's stuff so is like much, three or four. That's, there's so much yeah. Dungeons and Dragons worlds, and people create their owns that owns that. That's not the part of like Dungeons and Dragons I want to see on the big screen. It's not like when someone says Lord of the yeah. Rings, I'm like, oh, will they go to Rivendell? Will they go to Minas Tirith? Yeah. Like, I'm not seeing Dungeons and Dragons going, oh, are they going to the castle I built in the eighth grade? I want to see the cameos I want. I want to see fucking Zone of Truth. I want to see the Tiny Hut spell. I want to see some magic hand right. bullshit. So, like, all Give the that. stuff that people <laughs> like we want to see in a DD movie isn't the story or the setting or anything. It's. Yeah. It's what you're saying is like uh, what I want to see is like showing the split players and then the people playing in the game and then having famous spells and stuff that have reached popular cu popular culture. Like have a, a, a big bolt. all the uh, beholder bolt. guys oh, have the lightning bolt, have a magic missile, like all yes. that stuff. But the story does not matter. And the the whole trailer was like, oh, we're thieves. We're working together, blah, 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 like trying to do this whole thing. And I'm like, that's not what people care. Like, I don't care about that part. Like, I don't want your weird world building because it doesn't mean anything to me because yeah. it's not. Anyway. I'm sure I'm sure I missed some stuff. I watched the trailer when I was like doing something else and not fully paying attention. But to me, it didn't feel like there was that much like as far as differentiating the characters in terms of like their races like everyone just looked human except for there's one yeah oh, female God. character who i think is a tiefling but she looks just like a human with horns and a tail and they like and weirdly I was like, pointed out their classes and i was like yeah, i i i couldn't i honestly i need to rewatch it but like there was no like 
half orcs or elves or or uh i mean barbaric like it like giants or anything like that i just it didn't feel like there was much different between them other than like hey i have this weapon listen i want the paladin to walk into a bar and then try to have sex with everyone in the bar because that's yeah. what D players I do i want i want the the old weird wizard that's addicted to betting on cat races okay <laughs> yeah that's um, what i want <coughs> Anyways, I swear folks, to God, if any of those critical role fuckers get in there, they are the worst. They are bringing down d and I'm putting my foot down. I tried to listen to that shit, and it's like fucking drama kids on Adderall for hours. It's bad. Yeah. It's bad. I have to mention I've 20's watched. pretty good. Um, yeah. 20's good. I used to listen to Nerd Poker, which um, actually they deleted the original episodes. I have them on my hard drive. <laughs> They're thinking back. They're so raunchy. They would not do. <laughs> they would not. There's like, there's like, like not alive child jokes in that oh, show. Wow. And like, it's wild. Yeah. But it's they're the the problem with them is their storytelling was so good. So it's like you want to yeah, listen they, to they, it. You're into the story. Adventure yeah. Zone is is probably the top. Oh, by I need far. to listen to them. At least I've never. Their quality is just it's just miles above everybody else. And a lot of it is editing. Yeah. That a lot of people just don't do, but they really should. But a lot of it is also just good players who commit to like rule of cool and storytelling. Yeah. It's just fuck critical role. It's uh anyways, uh we should probably talk about the news and not Dungeons and Dragons for the <laughs> rest get of on this that. episode. Oh, because um, you played the news song and then we yeah, decided we didn't to talk care. about something else. Yeah. Um I I I I, I Ian, I know you did this, and I'm trying to think of a way to bring it down we don't, because look, it's look, so well we done, and I like we it. We don't have to, to be clear. We don't have to do it in this order, but the problem that we've had before, a little behind no, the scenes, agree, is that we throw, agree. we throw news stories in here all throughout the week, and we end up with 12 news stories, and we feel like we have to get through them, and we can't tell which one's good. So I just brought it into three sections. No, Top, good. middling, I like and cut it. line, just to say, like... There's stuff in here we can ignore. I was we trying to think of a way to get it. mad, but I'm not mad. I'm impressed. It's good. It's good. I should I pay like you more. You. Uh, Let's talk about John Romero has announced a new first person shooter game he's working on in Unreal Engine 5. Is it this Doom is, 2? Oh, I mean, I'm pretty. Well, Microsoft owns it now. Oh, my God. What if they did? What if they brought him in to work on the next Doom game? But yeah, so this is uh, next shooter, an all new FPS with an original new IP. They're just getting started. Uh, this is the, it's kind of weird. The uh, announcement is like, we're working on a new FPS, Unreal Engine 5. Please look at our job listing. So this is a while away, but I'm very excited about this. I feel like the FPS genre is a little stale right now. What do you guys think? There's a lot of, there's a lot of samesies stuff going on between different, different uh, <laughs> games out there. So I'm, I'm ready for a fresh new take on from uh, from Johnny Rami. You know, he's yeah. he's got yeah. it coming, especially since his last his last games haven't been super great. Uh, his sigil chapter for Doom 2 was incredible, but he then went to make other video games that weren't do Doom 2 wads. And I just don't know why he would do that. So this is at least a step into the right direction. But I think someone really has to get in there and say, hey, listen, you made the best game ever made. 20 years ago just make more levels for it um, <laughs> yeah for sure i um maybe i should apply for a job here <laughs> <laughs> they they have they have a lot of art stuff up i yeah, just I, checked I, i'm pretty sure they're they're probably based out of ireland now for the studio as well because they look they have a list of jobs they have a Code place to send your cv art. And then they have games benefits. Uh, everyone in the company gets a stake of the company. You get minimum four weeks vacation per year, plus 10 national holidays, a bonus week for your fifth year, and another bonus week for your 10th year. So if you were at the company for 10 years, you get six weeks of paid vacation per year, plus the holidays. Hybrid working, so work from home, work from office, remote work. Health, fertility leave, they parental leave and support. They'll give you... At five plus years, should you choose to take an unpaid time for personal projects, we will cover 20% of your pay, provided oh, that it is in an area of your sabbatical? interest. That's awesome. Yeah, this is uh 
Yeah, maybe I'll just send him a and CD. You can bike to work. <laughs> yeah, this place actually looks awesome. They'll give you anyway. 1,250 euros for a regular bike and up to 1,500 euros for an electric bike. That's What's that, like 75 cents? It's, I don't know. It's in Ireland or it's, whatever. It's not Canadian. Oh, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> sorry. We're going on tangents today, but hey, if you guys if you guys want a game job, go look at RomeroGames.com because it turns out they are a good employee, which is rare in the games industry. <laughs> what? Um, not not to move things along. What's what's this I hear about Minecraft and nfs? Yeah, um, I, I actually don't know the details on it because the story is actually pretty thin. But Minecraft basically came out and said, we're not going to allow NFTs in our game. We are never going to do NFTs. We're not going to uh, allow any projects. And they basically said, uh, quote, blockchain technologies are not permitted to be integrated inside our Minecraft client and server applications. No more may they, nor may they be utilized to create NFTs associated with any in-game content, including world skins, persona items, or other mods, unquote. Basically a big hold fuck off nfts we don't want anything to do with you and you will have nothing to do with us and hell yeah hell yeah yeah the only other thing i read about this was there's a crypto based company that sells minecraft seeds on the blockchain and now they have to what? change the way they they do work again i do not feel bad for Good. these men but part yeah. of me was thinking a minecraft seed yeah you could generate it and sell it to someone but couldn't someone somehow like you could just end up there anyways? No, they're the the way they're generated. There's too many possibilities. Right, I know, but it's not impossible for someone but, but else. You remember, to get there. You remember, it took them like ten years. There was some fan project. Yeah, it they took found them the loading years screen. To find, yeah, to find the loading screen seed. So I think it's stupid because the seed doesn't really matter that much anyways. Because oh. the world's so big, it's gonna. It's not like it's not like. Uh, I don't think Terraria is like this, but for example, it's not like it's a it's a limited boundary and you generate the seed and that's all you have. You just keep walking somewhere if you want a better location. Yeah. Anyways, and you NF can regenerate once you're in it. Yeah. NFTs are stupid. I'm very glad a game as big as this has come out and basically said we need app. We want absolutely nothing to do with this and we will pursue you legally if you try to in involve any Minecraft IP in it. Um, I want to see more games do this. Got to see more more games, more developers, more publishers do this. Totally. Uh, midling. We go in. We go in middle. You want me to go midling? Let's go. We're, we're we're in a stalemate because I don't know who's leading the news section. <laughs> oh, I was I I forgot I had asked you to lead it, so I stopped. I was I was I was letting you. Okay. I, I forgot I had done that. I I was not attempting to lead it. I was just trying to move on to the yeah, next. Kyle's the piece <laughs> no, of no, shit. We were having here. We were having a staring contest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's go on to the next news. Microsoft's Activision, Activision buyout could be approved by the FTC as soon as next month. So basically the highlight of this is there's kind of a give and take between the FTC and the companies involved in a merger. And uh, essentially, per FTC's own guidance, they've hit a deadline where the FTC now has 30 days to challenge the acquisition. Otherwise, the deal can continue. So we will know within the next 30 days if the FTC decides to challenge the Microsoft Activision uh, acquisition. How are you guys feeling about this? You know, we're, we're a bit removed from the initial news. Are you still excited about it? Are you worried about it? What do you hope will come from it? Uh, you go, Will. I, I just I just hope for Call of Duty on Game Pass so I can play it yes. all again without paying $10,000. Yes. 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 I yes. Gen generally, I have pretty pretty good hopes for Microsoft turning things around for Activision. Um, I think in the past like five years or so, Microsoft's really solidified itself as a, a pro gamer company. Like they're, they're not just, you know, entirely about making money. And, and I mean, game pass I'm sure is making them a ton of money, but it's also the best deal in gaming right now. Like it is, I, 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 I trust Microsoft more than I trust Sony, I think. And Activision has its share of problems. I'm really interested to see what happens with uh, Bobby uh, Go Suck a Dick Kotick. Um, uh, whatever. I, I think he got signed on for another year or something like that as an interim sort of CEO or something. So I'm interested to see what happens with him once that is up. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, I'm OK. I'm OK with it. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm excited. Um I think my I think Microsoft has 
an incredible platform now with Xbox, with Game Pass, with uh, basically like no division between the generations, just better hardware. You know, like like yesterday I saw a story about how if you own Persona 5 um, on the PS4, <laughs> you cannot upgrade to the Persona 5 Royal Edition on the PS5. They're just like, nope, no upgrade path. Go buy it. And that's just such bullshit. Like Microsoft would not allow that if that was their platform. Um, so basically they have an incredible platform, but they, the games are better, especially how much they're adding stuff to game pass all the time, but bringing some more first party exclusives is what they need and bringing on Activision. And like you said, Kyle, Activision is not in a good state. They felt like they were really struggling. They were kind of on autopilot, but in a bad way. Yeah. Um, so I, I hope this really spurs on some some creativity that Call of Duty Call of Duty is still a fantastic series, even though I don't really give a shit about any of those games past four. Um, and I they really need somebody to come in there and revitalize things. So I'm, I'm glad this could potentially happen. Yeah. Move it on. Mm. Ubisoft, they had their uh, a report of their first quarter 2022 to 2023 sales. Uh, this is more of a business slash stockholder addressed event, but there were two interesting tidbits of gaming coming out of it. Number one, Avatar colon Frontiers of Pandora will now release in 2023, 2024. That's fiscal year 2023, 2024, which means not 2022 as originally planned. I'm a little upset about this. That game actually kind of looked like it could be interesting. What do you guys think? I am not as upset as I am, like I'm eager to see what the extra time is going to afford them to do. Um, because I, I said this the last time we talked about Avatar, I, I think it's prime real estate for a video game set in Pandora. Um, I think it could be really fun. I think what they showed was it last year, or was it earlier this year? I can't remember. Um, it was earlier this year, yeah, w- what they showed did seem very early. Um, so having it sort of release still later this year had me a little bit worried. So this one I'm not, I'm not too upset about, but I, I do want to see what they're working on and I I hope it's good. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, I'm, I'm a little worried about this. Like you said, the delay, they need time to work on it. But what I'm thinking about is if you remember when they decided to delay, Ubisoft had that, had that, that press tidbit, I think it was about a year, year and a half ago where they basically came out and said, Hey, um, Oh, no, longer than that, where they basically came out and they said, hey, we're going to focus on quality. So we're pushing Watch Dogs Legion (laughs) and we're pushing Far Cry 6. And they didn't even give new dates for those. And they pushed them. They delayed them. They worked on them more. They both came out. They're still steaming piles of dog shit. So, I mean, they're not that bad. But, like, I don't know where that time went. If When they deliberately came out and said, we don't want to keep making the same games. We want to make something interesting. So we're going to delay to do that. And what came out was the same thing as before. Like that, that's the hesitancy I have here is like, sure, take how much, however much time you need to finish the game. But Ubisoft's Ubisoft still keeps cranking out the same, you know, seven out of 10, six out of 10. So Um, someone at work had a great way of putting it. And I can't exactly remember how they phrased it. um, So I'll say it in Spanish. No, uh, they said um, that Ubisoft, what is Ubisoft is great at making games four years later. Like they take a great yeah. idea that just hit like brand new Breath of the Wild and four years later yeah. or not really four years. Here comes Immortals Phoenix Rising. Like Immortals Phoenix Rising is a pretty great game and it's awesome. It would have been way better if it came out in 2017 or 2018. Yeah. Um, and, and they do that with a lot like take Skull and Bones. Skull and Bones would have been mm-hmm. awesome if it came out after Black Flag. But we're seven Assassin's Creed games later and it's coming out. So like. Yeah. Um, yeah, they need to take time and actually change up what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so second piece of tidbit, second piece of gaming news tidbit out of this. Quote, we also decided to release in 2023 to 24 a smaller unannounced premium game originally slated for 22 to 23. This is an unannounced Ubisoft original unannounced premium game. Sorry, not original, not necessarily original, but what do you guys think this is and what do you what do you hope it will be? I'm assuming this is not in any of their IPs. Unannounced. Oh, so we're thinking new IP? 
a not necessarily new IP, but not Assassin's Creed, not Far Cry. That's oh. not explicit. But but just my reading into the phrasing is it doesn't sound like they're saying new Far Cry. I was thinking Division well, 3. I, I think it has to be no content for Division yeah. 2, though. Division 3, Far Cry 7, or or if it's n- not one of their quote unquote series, I could see like a, a new Ghost Recon, a new Splinter Cell or something like that. But they did I just could, cancel yeah, I, Splinter Cell and Ghost Recon in this release, so probably Yeah. I, I wish it was Splinter Cell, because I'd kill for a new Splinter Cell game. Maybe it's like uh, I don't I'm trying to like uh Rayman? Rayman? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I, can't I, I was trying to think that. like it like an original sort of I know they didn't say original, but like like actually, you know, storied history at Ubisoft. It's Mario well, Rabbit's three. What oh, oh, oh I was just thinking, what if it's another Nintendo tie-in? It could be. I I it it can't be the same team as Mario Plus Rabbits, because they're 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 too busy right now. They wouldn't have a game to put out later this yeah. year originally and then pushed it when they're focusing on Sparks of Hope. But what if it's another weird tie in like that? That would be that would be pretty cool. This is the kind of thing that I wish in like whatever two years when we find out we can trace it back to this, but we'll never be able to because they'll announce like 50 games between now and then and we'll never <laughs> no, be able to I, place it. <laughs> I, I, I was trying to, I was like, why is this segment like pulling teeth for us to like come up with interesting discussion here? And it's because it's Ubisoft. Like yeah, it's, it's because they, they just, only have like, like because games. every good idea we'll have, they won't do it. Like just <laughs> yeah. make another splinter cell. People will buy it. Ah, no, let's not do it. Uh, like, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> moving on. Last news item of the night, a nice quick little fun hit, another little brain teaser for us. Sony has partnered with Spin Master on toys and merchandise for PlayStation games. Uh, And according to Spin Master, this includes titles like God of War, Horizon, Last of Us, and Uncharted. It plans to create products, quote, in the action figure, collectible, playset, plush, roleplay, vehicles, RC, and games and puzzle categories, end quote, what would you guys like to see? We're talking like board games, collectibles, action figures, costumes. What what do you what do you want from any Sony property? I want God of War Monopoly. <laughs> God of Monopoly. God of Monopoly. Uh I don't know. I mean, I I don't I'm pretty specific with what I buy as far as merch goes and like action figures. Um so I don't I don't Honestly, this doesn't like interest me that much. I, I guess I would have to see what they come up with. I would like a yeah. stray themed taxidermied cat. <laughs> Just a big, it has like, to be a real cat. One to one. I'll know. I mean, honestly, between God of War Horizon, Last of Us, and Uncharted, I want I want some like kids action sets where you know you have yeah. like like the tall neck and the action figures and stuff. You know, because those games are made for children. I want one of those. You made me think of those. Like, remember those like science sets and stuff where they're like, it comes alive. Like the slime sets. I want one of those for like last of us, where you're like crushing up zombies and everything. I was trying to think like a tabletop role playing booklet for one of these, but I'm not interested in playing in any of these worlds. Horizon. Horizon is the only one. God of War. I wouldn't want to last of us. I would rather do something zany like fallout. But you can't even make a good board game out of those necessarily because they're so focused on cinematic action. And and that's not me digging as much as it sounds right. like. But really, like, you can't. You can't. Like, Uncharted, the closest to a good board game you would get would be, like, one of those, like, Fire Island ones yeah. or Mousetrap where you're, like, be setting something cool. up and then having to run it. Um, or, like, yeah. a, um, you could probably retheme uh, what's the Matt Leacock... Uh, Forbidden Island, you could retheme yes. to, uh, yeah. To Uncharted. So I, I, I think, I think the other place for this, I don't really get into game merch that much, you know, like wearables and apparel and hats and stuff. But uh, I'm guessing most of that stuff is probably contained on the Sony store, the Sony website. But if you could go into a Walmart and see some like really cool, high quality like T-shirts and hats with like God of War Horizon Last of Us stuff on it, I think that's a winner right there. You know. Um. Do you I think... would be interested. In, oh, sorry. What, what were you going to say? Sorry, I'll be quick. 
I don't, I don't know if they are allowed to at all because they seem to do it themselves. But do you think Sony has any rights to merchandising for Death Stranding? Probably not. I, uh, yeah, they just published not. it, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, they've been putting out a lot of cool content for their stuff, but I would love yeah, to I see if, more red. I wonder stuff. if that would extend for like Spider Man because Marvel's pretty locked down on like toys and stuff for that Oof. but it's a different iteration so i don't, like I don't know ratchet and Marvel. clank yeah yeah ratchet and clank i could see what what i was going to say before is there's um there's a studio based out of japan called prime one studio and they do extremely high quality and high fidelity uh action figures and and just of like video game yep. characters comic book characters like they're great i actually went to two of their showroom floors when i was in tokyo and it was amazing I would be really interested in a similar thing happening from Spin Master with like those video game characters. I think having like one sixth scale or like one like one fifth scale, um, like I have uh, back here. This is Batman from Batman the Animated Series. You can't see it because he's blurred out. There's uh, Gordon Freeman is right over there. I <gasps> I jealous. like that kind of stuff. And his he has a gravity gun and it lights up, but it's not Ooh. lit right now. Um, I got those from Mondo, so thank you, Mondo. Um, but I would be interested in something like that. As far as like little tiny action figures and stuff, that doesn't really, I don't really care about that. But Oh, uh, I'm just looking at uh, Sony first party stuff. Demon Souls, they could put some stuff out for. It'd be interesting. Okay, yeah. Shadow of the Colossus, Eco, not Ooh, Last Guardian. Um, <laughs> I, and then the other thing, Gran Turismo RC cars, Ian. Uh-huh. I was thinking that too, but but you would just have the, the car the day, license just, for that. They're just, they're just crappy RC cars. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, so I think the point is, if you're a Sony fan, there's probably some pretty good merch coming down the road. You want the you. shitty ones, if you're a Sony fan. Yeah, yeah, that's what you deserve. Oh, Ghost of Tsushima, um, actually. Give me a, I would get a nice, like, Ghost of Tsushima... Stylized shirt. Yeah. Or one of those flutes, so I can not play it. Or, or if they box. give you the power of the wind to show you which way to go, that'd be really cool. <laughs> you get like the the worst part of Storm's power from X Men. <laughs> <laughs> you pee your pants. Well, folks, that's gonna do it for this episode of Local Chat, and that's the news. Take us out, Will. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in on this lovely Thursday, the 21st of July, 2022. Joining me today was the lovely, the amazing, the incomparable Kyle Bailey, as well as the trash rat himself, Ian Gibson, uh, who has a gator in his backyard. Um, It's like a 10 foot gator (laughs) and it's like 40 feet from our back door and it's crazy and he's coming in. Hello my honey, hello my darling. Welcome to Florida. Folks, you can find all of our hot, hot content, subpixelfilms.com. We'll bring you straight to our link tree where you can go out to all the different places. Um, Keep an eye on our social channels over the next couple weeks because things are a changing. Uh, We've got some awesome stuff coming up for you, so please tune in for that. Uh, This weekend, I'm not quite sure what we are doing yet. There is no Sunday service on Sunday. Might be a Saturday stream, but I think I have to work Saturday night, so we'll figure that out. Maybe we check out some Hello Loose. Damn. Damn. Free weekend. Come play Hell Let Loose with us. Um, until then, you can find me on Twitter at Hunt270. You can find Ian on Twitter at Think Gibson. You can find Kyle on Twitter at Kyle of the Beard. And like I said, you can find, uh, oh, at Subpickle Team on all Twitter, Instagram, and everything. Um, I think, did I hit everything? Is that everything? Yeah. Let's kill okay. it. Okay, thank you everyone for tuning in. We will see you all next week. Bye. 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 Bye.